Tonight, we will be examining an extraordinary occurrence in unidentified flying objects and the ever-puzzling abduction phenomenon. I'm standing near a body of water very similar to Lake Wavion in the state of West Virginia, where, in November of 1989, amateur photographer Ted Swenson took the now famous 8mm footage of a strange flying object. There were additional reports of sightings that same night from locations as far away as Benson Springs. These pictures represent just one of the many sightings photographed by Mr. Swenson over a 10-year period. Ted Swenson is vehement of his denial of the charges that his UFO photographs are nothing more than scale models against a landscape background. I am used an amateur photographer. There is no way I could be faking it. Uh, I am not Steven Spielberg. I, I have no expensive equipment. I, I just my own Kodak film camera. Uh, do people think I, I could be faking it in my living room? Uh, that would be impossible. There seem to be widely divergent opinions on the possible motivations of alien visitors. In fact, some people believe that they are here for the benefit of humanity. However, there are accounts of visitations which are frightening indeed. These cows, grazing peacefully nearby, are very similar to the cows involved in cattle mutilations. Some bizarre activities seem to frequently accompany UFO appearances. Shortly after the sightings on November 23rd, twin sisters Dee and Belle Parker House of Dogtooth County told an astounding story of alien abduction. November 30th. Yeah, yeah, I know, because it was almost an entire month after Halloween. When I saw that thing in the rain. Well, first there was that smell. That yeah. Smell, kind of like old tires burning. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot like old kinda tires. Kind of like old tires burning, maybe crossed with roses. Yeah, or maybe it was more like pine salt. I don't know. A little bit like pine <clears> salt, <throat> too. Just kind of kind of fresh and tangy. It had a tang to it. Yeah. Anyways, that thing came down. Sucked you up just like a vacuum cleaner. One second I was there talking to Dee, and then the next, poof, I was gone. And I, I was I was terrified. I wanted to run, but I couldn't. It was like I had no longer had control over my body. Kind of frozen like. I was frozen. Like frozen with fear. Frozen. Or mind control. The next thing I know, poof, I'm up there beside you, standing on a cold metal deck. It looked a lot like them California raisins. Kind of all shriveled up with Great big goggly eyes and kind of stared at you. That's right. All they did is they waved their hand over us and our clothes were gone. We were stark. Absolutely naked. naked. Absolutely. I didn't know what to do. Naked I was the day we was born. Just like that, except we weren't joined anymore. So well, like that's, that. right, that's right. When we were born, we was joined at the hip. We were joined at the hip. We separated the curve. It was something. Our mothers always said we've been special because of that. We have been very blessed. Blessed yes, by the Lord. They must have been a technolo technologically advanced race I think because they, they had such good air conditioning. They did have very fine air conditioning and it didn't hardly work at all. I myself think that the reason they are here is to warn us about our nuclear power and that we shouldn't be messing around with things we don't understand. I think that's right. I think they'd like to tell us how to do things right, but they think we got it too messed up already. That's right. That's like back when, uh, well, just an example. When they changed Coca-Cola to New Coke. I know. They messed it up because we were messing with things we didn't understand. That's right. After they had performed a series of medical tests on us, for which I would probably guess a long time we were unconscious. I think so, too. Because it seemed like, it didn't seem like there was much time passing while we were on board the ship. But once we got back down home, my husband, Frank, raised hell because I'd been missing for a day and a half. I know. He thought you were out with that, that whole Bernie family. Bernie Peters, you understand? Yeah, I remember yeah. old Bernie. Mm -hmm. Anyways, when we left the spaceship, in the next couple of days, we discovered that we had acquired some powers. For instance... I found that for a short period of time, I was able to quilt quite rapidly. I remember that because they had the quilt and bee and you won it. $30 yeah. worth of thread I put into that quilt. And no, it, was, it was a star chart. And I think what it was, 
was they had implanted the star chart into my head. It ain't like nothing we ever learned in school. Here's a footnote. I entered that quilt in a competition at the county fair. Yep. And I came in first prize. First prize. First prize. And they took a picture of it and put it in the newspaper. And by the time the county fair was over, the quilt it was, was gone. gone. It, it was gone. gone. The quilt was the only thing that was missing. And my theory is, is that the FBI took it. But there was a fellow from the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. calling and asking if we could give well, him a he title. said he was from the Smithsonian. I don't know. I don't know. I think he might have been. I think he might have been. Because he said he'd like to, to do an article on us for some Smithsonian magazine or Smithsonian Inquirer, I think. That must have been it. That was the extraordinary account of the abduction of Bell and Dean Parker House. Join us for next week's program, where we will have the astounding story of Angus McCargill and his close encounter with the Loch Ness Monster. It's a chilling story, and I'm sure it is one that you don't want to miss if you can. Mm -hmm.